Hi, everyone. How are you doing? So it's kind of like the last session be before our lunch break. So may I ask you to stand up a little bit for five seconds? And then like join this with me, OK? I will say like hip, hip, and then you clap, hooray, OK? We just do this th three times to ensure that you will listen to at least like three of my stories, OK? I promise this is a very fun session. You will hear stories only, OK? So on my count, hip, hip, hooray. Three times, okay? Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, yeah, so now you can sit down. Thank you very much. So today I will talk about how open source will change the world, but actually it will be a little bit different. So a bit about myself, uh, I just want to emphasize that actually by education, I'm an engineer. I graduated, uh, I left Vietnam when I was 16 years old, uh, and I had school, uh, the full scholarship by uh, Nokia at that time to go to Finland to study uh, high school and then later on the, um, uh, in the biggest uh, technology university in Europe, uh, in Helsinki University of Technology, Finland. Uh, and this part is very important because like that is the part that I'm going to tell you the two stories. Uh, what brings me to the open source world? Um, later on, I did an MBA in the UK and then when I came back 10 years ago in the Vietnam, I worked uh, completely in marketing communications for the last seven years before coming back to tech three years ago. So currently, I'm the founder of Yellow Blocks, uh, founder of ABCD Tech Communities and also uh, Women in Tech Vietnam. Uh, I'm also like the content consultant for various technology, um, business content, uh, and like advisor for like investment projects in startups and technology. So my topic today, instead of how open source will change the world, it will be a little bit sharing about how two birds change the world. So I will read to you a fairy tale because I promise that I will tell the story, okay? This is a very common story. If you can match this to Jack Ma from Alibaba, or Steve Jobs, or Bill Gates. But this, this guy is different, so let, let's see if you can get who he is. So once upon a time, there was a skinny, unknown, and just another tech geek who had been fooling around with computers since his childhood. And then he wrote a groundbreaking operating system and distributed in the internet for free. And today, he's an international hero. And his creation is used by over 100 million people, and indirectly by more than 1 billion people in the world, and used by the biggest organizations like IBM. So he's a man now with the revolutionary vision and who challenges our values and may change our world. So this is like not my writings, OK? This is like the synopsis of a book about this guy. So can you guess who he is? Sorry? Yes, so I'm going to talk about the first bird, Linux. So the Linux creator, uh, Mr. Linus Torvalds. So he's a Finnish guy. So actually, I ran into open source when I was in the university, first year in university in the Helsinki University of Technology. I have been using computers all my life since I was 10 years old. But when I was 16, when I came to the university, I was like shocked because like on the campus, like there's a lot of computers lying around, but like the only operating system that they were using at that time is Linux. And of course, like the user experience at that time was very difficult for me to catch up. And I say, OK, why, why don't you use Microsoft Windows? Why don't you use this and that? But like across the campus, this all like this Linux operation system. So I had no choice, right? I had to be like the tech geek and also like to mess around with like the operating system. So a little bit about Linux, the founder of Linux. So he also started coding when he was 10 years old. Um, like he was born in 1969, so he started coding um, when he was 10, like with the basic programming language at that time. And by 1991, when he was only 21 years old, and he's also studying in Helsinki University, he created the first version of Linux kernel. And at that time, it is 
the reason why he created that is because he had like a mini X at that time, and he cannot afford to buy the operating system from Unix. So he said, okay, I just create one myself. And that's how Linux started. And he named it like Linux Mini X version um, and written, shortened down as Linux. And then like in 2000, and, um, in 2000, so nine years later, Linux become one of the most popular operating system. And to in 2000, Steve Jobs actually invited Linux to his uh, office and say, okay, I want you to go and work on our Mac OS operating system. And Linux rejected that offer. He continued to contribute to the Linux Foundation uh, onwards till today. So he has been like working with this project since 1991. And then in 2005, he created another open source um, program called the, the Git. It's like the version control of the programming language. And now like his salary is like 1.8 million US dollars per year paid by the Linux Foundation. But it's very small compared to what he could have achieved if he had like commercialized um, these Linux like the way like Microsoft like would be the billion dollars uh, company. So this is like the very old email uh, that he distributed to all the tech geeks at that time in 1991. Is uh, the original email that he he spread out to um, like hello everyone using Minix, and he thought that. Uh, he is working on the new operating system, which is a hobby. It won't be big and professional, but he's asking everyone for the advice and like the he survey everyone. What would you like to have in a, an operating system? So I think this is also the start of like the open source spirit. And then on later on that year, he released the first Linux kernel, and now. Linux has become like the only operating system that is run 100% of the top 50, uh, 500 fastest supercomputer. So actually Linux run the world. Um, and the reason why, of course, like everyone here, you already understand about open source. So it's very dedicated and very like, efficient and scalable um, for the dedicated uh, services to use the open source program. Um, and then, like later on in 1998, uh, two guys, Eric Raymond and Bruce Burns, they founded the Open Source Initiative and started to spread out this movement. So I will not talk more about open source today, but I will talk more about the spirit, about the mindset that really facilitates these changes and will be the facilitator of further changes in the future. So the only thing that I want you to remember about open source it's not about the code, it's not about the technology, but it's about the philosophy. So what is the philosophy of open source? So um, open source just doesn't mean access to give something free access to the source code. It's an invitation, an invitation for the collaboration, an invitation for people to co-create with you or create beyond your cones. Um, so I collected some of the little fun statistics. So for now, open source is already present in the IT workforce and workloads 90%. And also 66% of the com um, companies uh, is now contributing to open source project. You can see from the dedication by Microsoft purchasing GitHub and like other initiative. And then now all of the current code, uh, 80 to 90% is comprised by the open source initiative. And in fact, when I mentioned like more than 1 billion people indirectly use the Linux system, it's Linux system is because it's based on, um, Android is based on Linux. And only uh, Android variations is also based on that. And only transportation, major transportation uh, system in the world is actually run on Linux also. And uh, air control, and of course like now only uh, servers, um, the, the cloud servers also run on Linux. And of course, like anyone here who had your own like first website, you can easily know that WordPress is now the most popular open source um, the website maker. So the most misconception about people when they think about open source is that, okay, it's, it's mean like completely free. There's no monetary cost. So only the people who doesn't need the money will do that. 
right? Uh, the second misconception is that open source is mean like when you give out something for free, it's usually like poor quality. You cannot ask for more from that. Or like another is that open source, it, it has no support. Like when people give out for free, you can ask them for the amendment or the change or the, ver the new version. And it might be the disruptor for the current existing businesses. So I think that we need to show no more um, reasons against this because we are already in this community. So there's no wonder that open source is everywhere. And it's not only in the work, um, not only in the source code, not in only in the technology that I just presented to you. So recently, Microsoft acquired GitHub for 7.5 billion, and also IBM acquired Red Hat, the um, community from also deriving from Linux Foundation, uh, for 34 billion US dollars. Because like IBM now want to move to the cloud game. And then another shocking news just 10 days ago. So Goldman Sachs in Wall Street, they now opened up their alloy. It's a program for the trading derivatives that they have been developing for 14 years in their business. Proprietary, they opened up it up, open source for all the Wall Street to use it. And then like this is like a big announcement because like the CTO when he said that when we open more, we will get more like collaboration and like get more values from that. And I come from the world of blockchain. So the philosophy of decentralized or democratizing um, the values is also present in here. So most of the public blockchain is actually like open source project. And like the four most um, discussed one, like for the open source initiative in blockchain, the first one is Hyperledger. Actually also get a lot of support from IBM and the Linux Foundation. Um, and Hyperledger is dedicated for like making scalable blockchain for open source initiative. Also enterprise Ethereum, and Corda is more for the financial sector. And Quorum is developed by JP Morgan. And they now start to also update it on GitHub and open source everything. So the word open has spread beyond the code. It's now more about the philosophy. And people from many walk of life are now enjoying the idea that actually we can create the platform, not necessarily technology. A platform that invites more people to co-create with us, to invite more people to give feedback, survey, and we develop as we go. So how we can be open for people to view, assess, and take part in this is more about the sense of community. So in a way, the open source philosophy is a platform for creation, for creativity, and for collaboration. So the second bird that I want to talk about today is, which bird is this? Yes, angry bird. Oops, angry birds. So this is Peter Westerbecker, and he's also my friend because like he happens to be also Finnish. Somehow I don't know like why Finland has also originated a lot of open source project. So Peter is the co former co-founder of Angry Birds. So he just recently left, like three years ago, uh, completely exited Angry Birds and now contributed to, um, like he's the founder of Slush. So anyone here has heard about Slush? Have you been to Slush? Yeah, so now Slush has been in 40 different countries. And of course, like the originating, uh, every year they have a very big festival gathering in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, this is a picture of me and, and Peter when he visited um, the Vietnam. And then uh, this is like my copy from uh, the Slush website so that you can see that actually Slush is not an open source um, community as they stated, but if you read their philosophy, it's very similar to what I just shared with you. So they wrote on their website, Slush is a student-driven, not-for-profit movement and originally founded to change attitude toward entrepreneurship. And Slush is built to be a vehicle for change. And around the world, the movement that want to drive um, and empower the upcoming generation. So now it's more than f operated in more than 40 countries and owned by volunteers. And then the recent Slush um, 
the recent slush in Finland just happened uh, 10 days ago. It gathered more than, um, I think, uh, more than 7,000 people, and 4,000 of which is like from the staff and also the investors that they come and join, and they call it like the biggest staff gathering in the, on the planet. And if you can see that like it's run by 2,500 volunteers over the years to organize, and it's very professional. So that is a movement. And um, I think that the common thing, in addition to both being the Finnish guy that I know, um, that the, uh, the common thing is that these two guys, they could have been billionaires. But they decided to change the world instead. They decided to open up their uh, contribution to the community to create more change. And it's like the, the success is moved beyond their original creation. Because like no one man can do this kind of things. It requires like the joining hands of like multiple stakeholders, multiple um, communities. And I think that these two examples also showcase to us like what we can do as an individual and as like a community contributor to uh, change. So how open source will change the world? I think that uh, it wraps up with a very uh, meaningful quote that I read through before I decided to quit my corporate job and then started my Yellow Box company. It's amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credits. Uh, especially in the Asian culture, uh, when we have like, you know, the positioning and the legacy to, to left. Actually, like this kind of new thinking is very close to like the open source thinking. So how open source will change the world? Actually, I think it's in our hands. And the reason why I, I want to mention about this part is equally important in my speech is why we need more open source and why we need more women in open source. Because I think that um, the organizer chain is a very good example of how she's like just one, um, one movement, one thinking can like really uh, shape forward being like the community. And also like, uh, as I know, Mozilla also sponsor like the ticket for all the female um, students and also like female uh, professionals to join this conference. So why? women will be like the change in women open source. So I will start with a little bit of the little set statistics. So in Facebook, 32% of the workers are women. But um, this is like actually, there's only 16% is like with the engineering role. The others is working like in marketing or business. And in Google, 30% compared to 18% of in technical roles. And in Slack, also 18%. But like the most surprisingly, in GitHub, less than 5% contributors and contributions come from the female coders. Um, and I think we have a very nice speaker before, before me that uh, also a contributor in GitHub. Uh, but actually, if you look at, there's uh, one very interesting article on the internet that scrap out only contributors from, from GitHub and then decided that less than 5% is female. And the reason is that like actually for female coders, usually when they contribute to GitHub, they will use some kind of very neutral name, gender neutral name. And the sentiment is that I fear the excessive spotlight of being a sole female programmer on a publicly available project. This is quite surprising to me. But yet, like it comes up like again and again in the uh, in the data scrapping, and also like there's some negative stereotypes from family and friends. And then I dig further in this article, and actually the writer is also come from the Asian country. So I think like the data set is also like very similar to the Asian culture. Okay, let's get to some fun facts. So I don't know like if you can agree with me, but I think naturally women are born with more um, tendency towards like the positive impact of communications. And we are more open to sharing, open to um, listen, and open to, how to say, to share with like the people, with what we have. So with what I just presented about the open source philosophy, I think that women is made out for open source. 
and can be like the change because definitely we need more movement and we need more showcase. Uh, we need more collaborations and we need more demonstration from the women uh, community. So where to start? So as I mentioned before, open source is not only about technology, not only about coding. Uh, of course, if you are a coder and programmer, uh, we can like start contributing more to GitHub and be proud to use your feminine name. I don't know if you have a feminine name on GitHub. No. See? Okay, so you are not counted in that five percent. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that this is a very common uh, observation. I was like astonished by the finding, and then I also talked to a lot of my programming female friends, and they say, yeah, I, I just use a very like synonym like uh, name. But very, very surprisingly, not surprisingly, when I asked the, the male programmer, of course they say, okay, I will use the pseudonym. I do not use my real name, but of course I will not use a feminine pseudonym. Right, so then why only women will be afraid to use like the gender um, de definition of like the name in GitHub? And then of course like you can also follow like the open source initiative and open source uh, organization. Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of um, the resources online, and then these are like the community. Whether if you are in the DevOps management application and so on. So as always, I think that like my uh, my presentation will be available for download. There will be a link later, um, and then I want to introduce you to this. So that's the introduction uh, video about ABC Tech Community and open source community uh, that we started by Yellow Blocks. Um, so it's not the community that specializes in open source topic, but it means like the philosophy of open source is used in there. So a little bit about my company. So we are like uh, we were featured in Yahoo News and Business Insider as the first emerging tech ecosystem connector for Vietnam and Southeast Asia. Um, and the reason why we started to do what we do is that we see a lot of like um, very strong growing communities in big data, in data sciences, in AI. Um, however, like the convergence of these communities are quite like d dispersed, ex at least in Vietnam. So what we do is that we connecting all of these communities and what we call is ABCD, AI, blockchain, cloud, and data. And then we connect the communities by we initiated the program, we built all the marketing materials, but it acts as the free open source uh, franchise. Anyone can run these ABCD community stack event or feature them as like the event partners. And we have like the guidelines for all the communities to use the kind of, of printings. Um, and, and then like over one year, we grew to more than 100 partners. And all of these are very big names in the corporate world. So the summary of my sharing, the first one is that open source did, and it is changing the world, and it will change the world uh, based on your contribution today. And also, the open source initiative have evolved beyond coding. And we need more open X, it means that you can um, illiterate uh, X with any words like open learning, open education, open, um, open communities and more women in open source. 
and we need to open up as in the philosophy and the thinking. And open source is about a sense of community. And I think that we have a great start today by having you all here and we share like the common um, alignment of the philosophy and what we are going to. And this is like the sources. So thank you. And you can um, register in this link and we will send you later like the full file of this uh, sharing. Uh, and I do think that uh, all of my uh, in all of my speeches, I always like develop like the whole new presentations, and then I just share it forward after the presentation because I think that is the kind of always uh, making the improvement and always making the version changes um, to people can feel free. And actually, like all of the content is curated by all over sources of internet, and we do the. Uh, very good uh, references to all of them. So thank you, and I am welcome to any questions. You can reach me like directly in the networking session. Thank you. <laughs>